Hi, this is Greg Thomas, and welcome to the Welsh American Channel. Individuals of Welsh descent had a profound and significant impact on the founding principles of the American Republic. In this video, we will look at the talented legacy of flag maker Betsy Ross. Elizabeth Betsy Griscom Ross was an upholsterer who was credited by many with making the first official U.S. flag, now known as the Betsy Ross flag. However, most historians dismiss the story as more of a Ross family tradition than documented history. The story holds that General George Washington, Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, and two members of a congressional committee, Robert Morris and George Ross, visited Betsy Ross in 1776. George Ross was the uncle of Betsy's husband. The legend asserts that Mrs. Ross convinced George Washington to change the shape of the stars in a sketch of a flag he showed her from six-pointed to five-pointed by demonstrating that it was easier and speedier to cut a five-pointed star. Yet there is no historical archival evidence or other recorded oral tradition outside of her family to substantiate this story of the first U.S. flag. It appears that the story first surfaced in the writings of her grandson in the 1870s, nearly a century after the fact, with no documentation in earlier decades. So who was Betsy Ross, and what do we know about her? Betsy Ross was born on January 1st, 1752, to Samuel Griscom and Rebecca James Griscom on the Griscom family farm in Gloucester, New Jersey. Betsy was the eighth of 17 children, of whom only nine survived childhood. When Ross was only about three years old, her parents moved to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ross grew up in a household where the plain dress and strict discipline of the Quakers dominated. She learned to sew from a great aunt, Sarah Elizabeth Ann Griscom. Betsy's paternal great-grandfather, Andrew Griscom, a member of the Quakers and a carpenter, had immigrated in 1680 from England. Like Martha Washington, Betsy's proud Welsh roots were from her mother's side of the family. According to FamilySearch.org, Wicketree, and Ancestry.com, Betsy's mother, Rebecca James, was born in Pembrokeshire, Wales in 1721. Ancestry.com states it was in Rhithillon, Pembrokeshire, Wales. After her schooling at a Quaker-run state school, Ross's father apprenticed her to an upholsterer named William Webster, where she became very skilled at her craft. Here is what we actually do know about Betsy Ross through historical records. Betsy Ross made flags for the Pennsylvania Navy during the American Revolution and after the Revolution. She made U.S. flags for over 50 years. She made 50 garrison flags for the U.S. arsenal on the Colskill River during 1811. The Navy flags were overseen by the Pennsylvania Navy Board. This board reported to the Pennsylvania Provincial Assembly's Committee of Safety. In July of 1775, the president of the Committee of Safety was Benjamin Franklin and its members included Robert Morris and George Ross. At that time, the committee ordered the construction of gunboats that would eventually need flags as part of their equipment. As late as October 1776, Captain William Richards was still writing to the committee or Council of Safety to request the design that he could use to order flags for their fleet. We know that Ross was one of those hired to make flags for the Pennsylvania fleet. An entry dated May 29, 1777 in the records of the Pennsylvania Navy Board includes an order to pay her for her work. It's worded as follows, quote, an order on William Webb to Elizabeth Ross for 14 pounds, 12 shillings, and two pence for making ship's colors, end of quote. The Pennsylvania Navy's ship color included an ensign, a long narrow pennant, and a short narrow pennant. The ensign was a blue flag with 13 stripes, 
seven red stripes and six white stripes in the flag's upper left-hand corner. It was flown from a pole at the rear of the ship. Ross was merely one of several flag makers in Philadelphia, such as Rebecca Young, who is historically documented to have made the earlier Grand Union flag of 1775 and 76, with the British Union Jack of the Crosses of St. George and St. Andrew in the upper corner and 13 alternating red and white stripes for the United Colonies. She did this for the Continental Army, along with many other ships' colors, banners, and flags which were advertised in local newspapers. It is thought by some historians that Ross's only contribution to the flag design was to change the six-pointed stars to the easier five-pointed stars. Many scholars, however, accept the claim by Francis Hopkinson, a member of the Continental Congress who designed most of the elements of the Great Seal of the United States. He claimed to have created designs for the early U.S. flag. Hopkinson submitted letters to Congress in 1780 requesting payment for his designs. Hopkinson was the only person to make such a claim in the Revolutionary War era. Here's a bit more about Betsy's personal life. Griscom met John Ross, a nephew of George Ross Jr., the signer of the United States Declaration of Independence, while being apprenticed to upholsterer William Webster. The couple eloped in 1773, marrying at Hugs Tavern in Gloucester City, New Jersey. The marriage caused a split from her Griscom family and meant her expulsion from the Quaker congregation. The young couple soon started their own upholstery business and later joined Christ Church. Betsy and John Ross had no children. The American Revolutionary War broke out when the Rosses had only been married for two years. As a member of the local Pennsylvania Provincial Militia and its units from the city of Philadelphia, John Ross was assigned to guard munitions. Sadly, he died in 1775. According to one story, he was killed by a gunpowder explosion, but family sources provide doubts about this claim. The 24-year-old Elizabeth Betsy Ross continued working in the upholstery business, repairing uniforms and making tents, blankets, and stuffed paper tube cartridges with musket balls for prepared packaged ammunition for the Continental Army. There is speculation that the attractive Betsy Ross was the beautiful young widow who distracted Hessen Colonel Carl von Dunup on Christmas Day in Mount Holly, New Jersey after the Battle of Ironworks Hill. Her distraction kept his forces out of the crucial turning of the tide Battle of Trenton on the morning of December 26, 1776 in which Hessian soldiers were defeated after crossing the Delaware River. On June 15, 1777, she married her second husband, Mariner Joseph Ashburn. In 1780, Ashburn's ship was captured by a Royal Navy frigate, and he was charged with treason and imprisoned at Old Mill Prison in Plymouth, England. During this time, their first daughter, Zilla, died at the age of nine months and their second daughter, Eliza, was born. Tragically, Ashburn died in the British jail. Three years later, in May of 1783, she married John Claypool, who had earlier met Joseph Ashburn in the English Old Mill Prison. Claypool had informed Ross of her husband's circumstances and death. John Claypool's diary and family Bible were recently discovered 240 years later in June of 2020. John and Betsy Claypool had five daughters settling down to a peaceful post-war existence as Philadelphia prospered as the temporary national capital from 1790 to 1800. In 1793, Betsy's mother, father, and sister, Deborah Griscom Bolton, all died during a severe yellow fever epidemic, unknowingly a disease caused by infected mosquitoes. After two decades of poor health, 
John Claypool died in 1817. Betsy Ross continued the upholstery business for 10 more years. Upon retirement, she moved in with her second Claypool daughter, Susanna, at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Her eldest Claypool daughter, Clarissa, had taken over Ross's business back in the city. Ross eventually became blind, spending her last three years living with her middle Claypool daughter, Jane, in a rapidly growing and industrializing Philadelphia. On Saturday, June 30th, 1836, about 60 years after the Declaration of Independence, Betsy Ross died at the age of 84. Ross's body was first interred at the Free Quaker Burial Grounds on North 5th Street in Philadelphia. In 1856, the remains of Ross and her third husband, John Claypool, were moved from the Free Quaker Burying Ground to Mount Moriah Cemetery. At that time, it was the practice of cemeteries to purchase the remains of famous historical individuals in order to drive additional business by plot purchases within their cemetery. The Daughters of the American Revolution erected a flagpole at the site of her grave in her memory. Today, a popular tourist attraction in Philadelphia is the so-called Betsy Ross House, but it is still a matter of historical debate whether she actually lived there. There is some evidence that indicates she lived in a house next door from 1776 to 1779, but this house was torn down after the existing house was designated as her official home. As a side note, in 1975, in preparation for the American Bicentennial, city leaders ordered the remains of Betsy moved to the courtyard of the Betsy Ross house. However, cemetery workers found no remains beneath her tombstone. Bones found elsewhere in the family plot were deemed to be hers and were reinterred in the current grave visited by tourists at the Betsy Ross house. So did Betsy Ross really make the first official U.S. flag? On one hand, there is no actual documentation of the event. A family oral tradition came to light about a hundred years after the revolution by her grandson. Francis Hopkinson, a member of the Continental Congress who designed most of the elements of the Great Seal of the United States, wrote that he created designs for the early U.S. flag. But on the other hand, Betsy's first husband, John Ross, was the nephew of George Ross, Jr., a signer of the United States Declaration of Independence and a man of influence in various congressional committees. This could have led to opportunities for John and Betsy Ross that were either unrecorded or have been lost. When we look at the life of Welsh American Betsy Ross, one thing is clear. Her legacy should not be focused on a single flag. Her story tells us about working women and men during the American Revolution. Their dedicated skills and craftsmanship served the various needs of the American Revolution. History tends to focus on the so-called leaders of the Revolution. But we should never forget the important contributions of the tens of thousands who worked in the background and actually did the work of the Revolution. One such person was named Betsy Ross. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel or give us a like and please feel free to make any comments below. If you would like to see more biographies of influential Welsh Americans, give us a like. And if you have an individual you would like us to showcase, let me know in the comments below. This is Greg Thomas saying Hoylem Nauer, bye for now.